Carolyn Doobie here. Today I am working in my art journal. First thing I'm going to do though is build some elements to put on that art journal page. This is using a stencil called Words to Live By from over at Stencil Girl Products and I have a piece of canvas underneath it. Cheap, average, everyday canvas. What I did is I took some black spray paint from Liquitex. I did do this outside, so I'll just mock it up here for you. But you get the idea that, you know, you spray it outside because of the fumes and all that kind of stuff. But what it did for me is gave me this look. So lots of black, all those words ready for me to use. What I do with these words, I cut them apart. That way they could become whatever I need them to be on my art journal page. And I must admit, I am pretty biased with this stencil. I love that I have so many words to choose from, to cut out, that can be used in an art journal page or whatever I'm doing. And the bias comes because this is one of the stencils that I created. Well, now that I've got my stack of words, and I'm really not sure which ones I'm going to do, I'm going to show you this art journal page that was made using those leftover paints on my palette from another project. I just kind of smeared them around, and all of a sudden I realized, hey, I, I kind of like the way this is coming together, so I'm going to make it an art journal page. Now what I had to do is spread out my words and decide which ones were really calling to me, which ones felt like they fit or belonged on this page. And, of course, I needed more stenciling. This one is the Picket Fence Stencil, also over at Stencil Girl, and I just wanted a little something over there. Well, now it's time to bring those words back on. The ones that I've picked here, and it's still, it needs more color. So that blue balancing it out up there, but you know what? I still want more color. So I'm going to bring in just a marker, and I'm going to color in the words to give it a touch of yellow, because if I don't have a complete rainbow in something, I don't seem to be very happy, and now I've got my rainbow. Well, the next thing I'm going to do is those are Kleenex, and those are dilution sprays, and what I am doing is soaking the Kleenex in Dilution's ink. I am doing a whole bunch of colors because I'm not sure which ones I want, but I'm just going to set them over on the counter and they'll dry, but I do need them to be completely dry for the next part. While they're drying, I'm going to add a little bit of journaling to my page. I'm using a green pen over the green so that it's a very subtle look. These are just kind of what I'm thinking about feeling, sort of morning pages style, getting out whatever's on my mind. Not really meant for me or anybody else to ever read again. To hold down my canvas words, I'm going to use some Xyron double-sided high-tack tape, and that held down the canvas beautifully. Even with all the texture in the fabric, it was no problem for this stuff. Now I've got my dry Kleenexes, and what I'm going to do is pull the, the layers of it, because there's, I guess, two or three plies, whatever's in there. I'm going to pull it apart so I end up with very, very thin sheets. And again, I'm not sure which color I'm going to go with, so I kind of have a whole rainbow going on here. We'll see which ones end up in the finished project. And for how I'm going to use these color-soaked Kleenex, they do need to be completely dry. If they are damp, this will not work. So, so do make sure they are completely dry, but in all honesty, Kleenex dry very quickly. So now what I'm going to do is bring in some of Xyron's high-tack adhesive dots. And what I'm going to do is put them in sort of a border on part of this art journal page. I'm going to make a row of them. Now they're on this great easy-to-release paper, and there are three of them, four of them on there, and now I'm going to come in and add more to the row. By adding more to the row, I'm creating an irregular look to it, and that's what I'm after here because nothing about this art journal page is precise or even or anything like that. And so by just kind of putting them on there, I get this great row of all these dots. Well, now it's time to get some color on those wonderful dots. I'm going to take one of my color-soaked Kleenexes and just push it down. You really don't have to push it down that much because it's Kleenex and something that's called high-tack. So, And I'm just going to pull on that Kleenex, pull it off so that part of the color is there, You've got this irregular look to it. And I decided after seeing how these looked, I wanted them to have a little bit more of a round shape to them. So here comes the very technical part. What I'm going to do is kind of roll my fingers over this. What that's doing is just kind of rolling off the looser pieces that aren't attached to any adhesive. And I get more of the dot shape with it. So I wanted a different look for down here than I had up above. And of course, had I already sprayed this color on the Kleenex? No. So I actually had to go do another one. And here I am pulling the Kleenex layers apart. It is still a little damp in the middle because I'm incredibly impatient and couldn't wait for this Kleenex to dry. 
So as I put it on my adhesive dots there, there is, I'm putting it right where the wet part is, and yes, it tears beautifully, but I need to put the Kleenex where there's a dry part. Once I put a dry part on it, then it comes right up and will give me those rips and tears like what I wanted. I wanted a very sort of random, stringy, streaky feeling to this, and it is exactly what I got when I actually use a dry part of the Kleenex. So maybe I should learn to be more patient. Nah, that's crazy talk to actually be patient. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel. And just so you know that every time this video is shared, it's like bribing my muse to come back and inspire me again so I can make more videos to share with you.